Hi everyone and welcome back to the FPL Family YouTube channel. I'm Sam and today we are going to be talking about the impact that this transfer window has had on FPL. Now we are now entering a period of what can only be described as chaos amongst FPL managers as we all battle with the FPL premium conundrum. Prior to this transfer window, we had a few who we thought were really key assets that we were going to hold and own and love for most of the season, the likes of Mohamed Salah or Bruno Fernandes. But now, suddenly the arrival of Romelu Lukaku at Chelsea and of course the homecoming of Cristiano Ronaldo at Manchester United as well as Harry Kane's declaration that he is staying with Spurs for the season means that we now have multiple FPL assets and nowhere near the budget that we need to afford to own them all. So the FPL conundrum is 100% real at the moment when it comes to premium assets. Today, we're going to have a look at the midfielders and the strikers and try to work out who we think are the best options to own. Let's start with the midfielders. Now, we were really settled going into the early part of this season. Most FPL managers deciding to go with both Bruno Fernandes and Mohamed Salah. Of course, things have changed. The arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo at Manchester United surely impacts Bruno. We're yet to really see what that impact will be in terms of actual match time because, of course, he's signed during the international break. However, we are expecting that Bruno Fernandes will probably lose some of his route to goal potential. For Portugal, when these two play together, Cristiano is on penalties and he is on a lot of the free kicks also. Might that mean that Bruno Fernandes is no longer on penalties and set pieces at Manchester United? Well, we don't know that for definite, but it does seem likely. I would expect that Ronaldo arrives in that team and takes over those set piece duties from Bruno. What does that mean for Bruno? Well, at 12 million, it starts to make him a really difficult own because suddenly we are reliant on goals from open play. And what could we see from him in terms of his position on the pitch? We have seen in seasons gone by, sometimes he likes to be played deeper or sometimes Ollie likes to play him deeper. And that affects his points from open play ratio. And of course, in the past, that's never been too much of an issue because we've always had the potential to top that up with set piece threat. With Ronaldo arriving and Dan James going, you would expect that Ronaldo will fit straight into that team alongside Mason Greenwood, probably with Dan James's position kind of available now, I guess, with him having moved to Leeds. But what does that mean for the rest of the players? Because this is suddenly an incredibly attacking Manchester United side. Could we see either Pogba or Bruno sitting deeper? And if it's Bruno at 12 million, he becomes a bit of a non-asset from FPL, which is a horrible thing to say, given how important he has been to us over the last couple of years. Alongside him, though, of course, there's Mohamed Salah, who's taken a couple of price drops, or at least a price drop over the last couple of weeks. Now, for me, that's a mistake. He is one of these players that you hold him over the season because his points returns are likely to be impressive when we look across the whole season. Liverpool have started well. There's plenty of goals in that Liverpool side this year, and Salah will be at the heart of all of that action especially as he is on penalties and therefore as we said with Bruno route to points is always improved when they are on penalties also and then of course Sonny's in there too slightly cheaper in terms of the premium options obviously Bruno in at 12 Salah in at 12.5 both having suffered a price drop and Sonny in at 10 where he has held his price so far with a couple of goals in the opening couple of game weeks of the season now what does it mean for Sonny in terms of having Kane back in the starting eleven? Well, hopefully we're going to see the rebuilding of that partnership. And of course, it is now September and therefore Kane is able to score goals again. So with Son and Kane both playing together, he definitely becomes an option. But at his price point, he is difficult to afford. If you want to go with two premiums up top and still hold Salah, it is almost impossible to also own Son without completely decimating what the rest of the side looks like. If you haven't done so already, check out the wildcard video, which is available on the channel now, where I have a little look at how to fit in multiple players, multiple premium players, and still not sacrifice your team too much. But Sun is one that is a struggle. For me, of these three, Bruno, 
becomes a bit of a difficult own because of Ronaldo. Son maybe is a difficult own, but that's more to do with his price tag and the fact that you are trying to find an extra um, 0.2, uh, 2.52 to afford these other players. That means you're going to have to sacrifice probably your third midfielder spot and they have to be a really cheap, maybe 5.5 option rather than having maybe the likes of Torres or Yotta or Greenwood who are coming in around the 7.5 ish mark. If you want to own one of those guys, it's going to be really hard to own Sun. For me, the standout in this position is 100% Mohamed Salah. I don't think that you can go without Salah. I know some FPL managers are sacrificing him, but for me, of the three, he would be the one that you really need to hold on to. I just think the Liverpool fixtures continue to be nice over the next few weeks. And therefore, what we should see from Salah is a continuation of points, especially as he has something that these two probably don't have. Bruno probably loses his penalties to Cristiano Ronaldo. Son, even when Kane was on the pitch, wasn't on the pitch last um, in game week two when Spurs got a penalty. It was Deli Alley that took it, not him. So route to goals for Salah, more impressive potentially than the other two. Moving on to the strikers then, of course, we now have three premium strikers. Remember back to pre-season when we basically didn't have a premium striker? We, of course, had Harry Kane in the game, but because of all the rhetoric around where he was going to be playing next season, nobody was investing in the Spurs front man. Now, of course, the circumstances have changed. We had an announcement from him a week before transfer deadline to say that he would be staying at Spurs and the conversations that he's been having ahead of joining up with England and as he joined up with England was about winning trophies with Spurs over the course of the whole season. So I am expecting Kane to sign a new contract and stay with Spurs over the course of the season, not move in January with the potential then that he goes next summer if if Spurs still remain trophyless at that point. That makes Kane a really nice option, especially as he has had a price drop already. In fact, he has had two and is currently valued in the game at 12.3 million. If you have 12.3 million to invest in Kane, that's probably a nice idea. The fixture in game week four is a Kelsey against Crystal Palace and then two North, well, a North London derby and a London derby against Chelsea and Arsenal in game weeks five and six. Harry Kane loves a London derby and there's definitely potential in there. Now, one of the key things that is going to be playing on FPL managers' minds is how do we own all of them? In the wildcard video I shot earlier on in the week, we can see that there is a way to do it by owning two of them. You can build a side with all three of them, but the rest of the team means no Salah. It means no other real heavy midfield options in terms of the likes of Torres and Yotta. You have to really bring that budget down across the rest of your team. And for me, that's a sacrifice too far. So it means choosing either one or two of these guys, knowing that you're happy to go with just one of the midfield premiums, probably in terms of Salah. If we have a look at the others, then Cristiano Ronaldo is currently the most expensive of these three, coming in at 12.5 million in the game. No surprise to see him coming in so expensive. But it does mean that I think building a team with him makes a lot of sense because coming down to the other two will be a lot easier. If you build a team with Lukaku, you probably want to going to leave yourself a million in the bank so that you can eventually change to Ronaldo or change to Kane, depending upon what you want to do. And we might see more chopping and changing with forwards, even though that's not how I like to play the game. I really like to be loyal to my premiums and hold them because over the course of the season, those points make a big difference and they add up to a huge number by the end, as we saw last season from Bruno and Salah and Kane, who were right up there with the top uh, playing point scorers last season whereas if you chop and change there's always the risk that you miss out on those really big hauls from your premium assets which quite honestly is a bit of a disaster but it is potential to own two of them particularly if you go Lukaku and then one of Kane or Ronaldo I think the benefit of going with Kane is that across the Chelsea team and the Manchester United team there are cheaper options that you could own so you could go Greenwood you could go Mason Mount they won't cover you the goals that these guys will score, but they might get you the assists and they might rack up their own goal total also. So that whilst they probably won't get the level of returns that you would expect from Ronaldo and Lukaku, there probably is potential there. Whereas at Spurs, you've either got to go up to Sun and it's very difficult to find that 10 million right now, or you've got to drop back down to Delhi and Lucas Moura. But with Kane back in the team, we've already seen Lucas Moura get benched in game week three. There could be some rotation around those players because now there isn't the spots for all of Moura and Bergvine. 
and Delhi, and of course players like Lo Celso and Brian as they come back into the fold following international duty and of course bed in with the team. So there is more risk of rotation with those guys which you just don't get with Mason Mount at Chelsea and you're unlikely to get now with Greenwood at United until Rashford is back anyway. So maybe there's potential but I do think of the three I can see Ronaldo having an amazing game in game week four against Newcastle. The Chelsea fixtures, of course, take a massive turn for the better, as everyone knows, in game week seven. So for me, I think the best way to play these premium options is to go with Ronaldo first, buy into the rhetoric around his first game back at Old Trafford, and then in game week seven, potentially look to move him to Lukaku, and then in game week 13, potentially look to move Lukaku to Kane. And bring in the other players from their teams to enable you to still benefit from some of the points that they might rack up over the course of the season. But there is a huge FPL premium conundrum right now. You physically cannot own these three and these three all at the same time. You can't build a team that has them all in, particularly if you want to also add to that a premium defender in the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold or Andy Robertson, or indeed a premium goalkeeper in the likes of Alisson or Edison. It's impossible to build a team that fits all of these people in. There just isn't the budget. So you will have to make some tough choices. If it was me right now, wildcarding going into game week four, Salah and Ronaldo would be my picks of choice. It's very difficult to turn my back on Harry Kane, but I think the fixtures are so nice for these next couple for Manchester United, in particular that one against Newcastle and his second dar- um, his second uh, debut for the team that I would want to be invested in him for that. Of course, with Lukaku, we do have the potential a bit later on when they get through this slightly difficult fixtures that we have over the next couple of weeks. We get to game week seven and it is a beautiful sea of blue for the Chelsea boys. And that point, you're going to want Lukaku. And then, of course, have a little look at the Lily Whites in game week 13 when they can really return then. Of course, the reason that these guys are premiums is because they can return in every single match of the season. So there is still scope to absolutely go, these are my premiums and I will hold them unless they are injured. And that might be still the best strategy. If you are brave and you want to upside chase, then swapping around between them all feels like the best option. But it feels like that's the best option for the strikers. I think with midfielders, you're really looking at Salah and if you can afford him, going with Son, I think unfortunately for Bruno, with the arrival of uh, Ronaldo, unless a miracle happens and we see him stay on penalties, we see him stay on some set pieces, he becomes a bit of a non-FPL option. So that's what I think. What do you think? How are you going to play the premium conundrum? Uh, Let me know in the comments below who you think are the two or three premiums that you would love to own for the entire season. Or are you going to play the roulette and rotate the premiums around depending upon their form and fixtures? If you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you soon.